Welcome to another video in Arapaho Library series on executive function and young children. My name is Mary and today Lorianne and I would like to share some ideas for activities you can do at home or in the classroom to help young children grow their mental flexibility skills. Lorianne, can you start by reminding us what mental flexibility is? Sure, Mary. Met mental flexibility is what allows us to shift gears and think differently about something or to apply different rules in different settings. It helps us to think critically, be empathetic, organize information, persevere, and be creative. So here are a few ideas that use only things you can find around the house or in the classroom to help your kids grow their mental flexibility. So my first idea is to play I Spy. This can be made simpler for little kids. I spy with my little eye something blue. Or can be more complicated for older kids. I spy with my little eye something we wear when it's cold outside. Make it simpler again by only using a few objects or a picture of a few objects and choose one for the kids to spy. And you can make it harder by having the kids look in a larger space. They have to think about what objects might fit into the category and also have to use their working memories to pull and use information about objects they see. They also have to use their self-regulation to pay attention and filter distractions. So this activity works on all aspects of executive function. Mary, the first one I chose is partner painting. You could do partner drawing or do it with chalk. And it really is about taking turns. There are several ways to do this activity. Easiest is having two children paint on one piece of paper together. Having to work together without having rules about what they're going to do. Second, have two pieces of paper taped next to each other on the table or sidewalk and have the children work together to make one picture. Then show them what happens when you hang the picture as separate pieces. Talk about how it changes what it looks like. It's okay to draw on each other's papers too, which is very hard for kiddos to do and to go into that with no rules. You know, we're going to paint a house and there's going to be three windows in the house and, and to just be creative. Um, or how about a group project? with a large refrigerator box. Make a plan together, write it down. What will we make? Write a list of things. You'll need to build this object. Write down the steps for a second and third. Who will do which part? And then watch them work on it. So again, scaffolding and using all of the executive function skills we've talked about. That sounds like a lot of fun. So my second idea is simply playing with puzzles. With puzzles, you often, often have to try multiple solutions to solve a problem, like fitting the piece into its spot. You might have to turn the piece over or look at it a different way to get it to fit. For younger children, puzzles need to be simple and with a few pieces. These large wooden ones with peg handles work best for little kids as each piece fits only into one designated spot. The trick is when you have to turn it around or upside down to make it fit. And as young kids are very single minded, it's hard to remember to do that. <laughs> With older kids, of course, puzzles will contain more pieces, even smaller pieces and more complicated pictures. They have to look at each piece individually and see if they can figure out how it fits into the whole, both by the illustration and the shape. So anytime a child is having to figure out how to put two or more things together, they're using their mental flexibility skills. So blocks and other building materials are great for this too. I'm always surprised when I actually stop to think about puzzles and how many pieces are in the puzzle and the different kinds of handles on puzzles. And, you know, and then they get graduate up to those great big floor puzzles. Right. There's so many skills that they use to do that. True. Um, similar to yours, Mary, mine is an activity that we, most of us do all the time, um, sorting, but thinking about sorting in different ways. 
So yes, sort by color, sort by shape, or size, texture, habitat, if it's an animal that's land or ocean or flies, transportation, same thing. So just thinking different ways. Um, one of my favorite books right now is part of an early math series. And the title of this particular one is The Animals Who Wouldn't Sleep. It's time for bed, Mama tells her son, and he needs to clean up his animals. There are three baskets he labels, small, medium, and large, and he sorts the animals. And they create quite a ruckus. <laughs> and he writes new signs for swim, crawl, and fly, sorts them, and again, they make quite the ruckus. He tries to sort them one more time by color, and what happens? Ruckus. Yeah, a ruckus. <laughs> Another ruckus. So I'm not going to tell you how it ends, but my grandson, he's three, he loves this book, and every time we read it, he has to get out his buckets, and we go get the paper, and we write small, medium, large, and then we write the colors. Um, so he is really beginning to understand that we have all the same things, but we can sort them all differently. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a really fun one to do. Absolutely. So Lorianne, my last idea, of course, involves books. Simply by reading books showing children having diverse experiences and lives helps our little ones grow their thinking about the world. Dr. Rudine Sims Bishop once said that children need books that are windows, mirrors, and sliding glass doors. They need to be able to see themselves reflected in the stories that we read, the mirrors, but they also need to see and hear about the lives of other children, the windows. Sliding glass doors are stories we can step into and experience for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So read your children a variety of stories, like this one, one of my favorites, um, about a child who lives in an urban area, takes the bus with his grandma, and meets lots of different people. This is called Last Stop on Market Street, and it's written by Matt De La Pena and illustrated by Christian Robinson. I love that book. One of my favorites too. So Mary, my last idea is to play what if. Just like you play I Spy, which you talked about, you could play a game of what if. Mm -hmm. Ask a question like, what if dinosaurs live today? And have the kids tell you what they think would happen. You can ask prompting questions like, what would they eat? Mm. Or where would they live? Wow. You could even act it out with objects or puppets or just yourselves or draw pictures of what might happen. What if you lived at the North Pole? Where would everything, where everything was frozen? What would you do? Hmm. What would you wear? <laughs> A lot Again, of clothes. I'm gonna, yeah. <laughs> A lot of clothes. <laughs> um, I will share one more story about my little grandson. I was driving him home one day and he started talking about the sun. And I said, what if we went to the sun, what would we need? And of course, then we had to make a list about sunglasses and sunscreen and snacks and food and snacks. And <laughs> so, <laughs> snacks and snacks. But, but we had a lot of ideas. He had a lot of great ideas. So that was a lot of fun. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Executive Function and Young Children. In this video, we talked about some simple activities to do at home or in the classroom to grow mental flexibility. For more information, please visit the websites listed at the end of this video and in the video description. We've also provided a link in the description to book lists that also model and help grow mental flexibility, as well as books for parents and caregivers with more ideas and information. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Bye, Mary. Bye.